Hello and welcome to Worship at Home with Northampton Methodist Churches. We're glad that you've joined us today. Already we've reached Passion Sunday. Passion Sunday comes the week before Palm Sunday, so we're only a couple of weeks before Easter. At this point in Lent, we begin to focus much more closely on Jesus' death on the cross. As usual, John's Gospel is a bit different, and this passage from John 12 has all sorts, pointing us directly to that Friday. It seems that what came out in Jesus' prayer in the garden is already on his mind. Even now, his cry is to be allowed to bypass the cross and the suffering. But no. As Isaiah says, it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet, when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. What an amazing piece of prophecy received some 700 years before Jesus was even born. Jesus talks about being lifted up, signalling that he knew already how he would die. And yet, Jesus determinedly chooses to see it through. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Such courage, such faith. What a saviour. The other part that really caught my attention this time is where Jesus talks about the grain of wheat needing to die in the ground in order to multiply, bringing a plentiful harvest of new lives. It's very like Jesus' parable of the sower and the seed falling on good soil that multiplies. We could also link it with Jesus' teaching on the vine, bearing much fruit. That comes a, a bit later. It's there in Isaiah 53 too. In verse 11, the prophet writes, My righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous for he will bear all their sins. Clearly, it's about Jesus and his own death. But then straight away, he links it with his followers too. If anyone is hanging on to things in this life, even good things, they'll miss the point and lose it all. The key to life, in all its fullness, eternal life, is to give everything up to and for Jesus. Perhaps the current situation has served to challenge our earthly securities. We've changed how we work, see family and friends, travel and worship, among many other things. And it has been hard and awful and painful and at times devastating. It's hard not to cling to what life has been before, not to long for life to return to normal, whatever that was. If we're really honest, we kind of liked being a grain of wheat and we would quite like to continue being that grain of wheat if we can. But maybe we've been given a chance to do what Jesus calls us to do in this passage, to give up our lives for something new, for something more closely resembling the kingdom of God. This time of struggle has made us be more creative. For example, about caring for our neighbour. If we take this time of continued upheaval to let go of the life we had before and instead be reckless, 
generous, 110% in our love, perhaps something new will flourish that looks more like what God wants for us. Is God calling you to be more than just a grain of wheat? How has God cared for you and nurtured you in this time of being buried? Where have you seen signs of new life and new growth spring forth? Are there areas of your life that you need to tend to? Are there areas of your life you need to let go of and realise that you cannot or should not go back to? May we ponder all these things in our hearts with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and respond to him. Let's pray together. Lord, help me not to cling to things in this world. Forgive me for when I have hung on to false securities instead of looking to you. Jesus, make me more like you, willing to sacrifice everything for you, just as you did for us. Help me to be willing to be like the grain of wheat, to let go of self-interest and give myself for others. By your spirit, multiply your kingdom through me, through your people, the church, that we might bear much fruit to the glory of God, our Father, your Father. For your name's sake. Amen.